Hey guys, what's going on? It's Carl here, back with another episode and recording this one, as you can see in the orange game, we're here in Tokyo, Japan. Today we're gonna be talking about the Oppo Reno, and maybe this is the smartphone that not too many people have heard of. The Reno, to those of you that live in North America, isn't available yet, but in markets like here in Asia, in Europe, this guy is making a huge push. And as an extra little bonus, I'm giving this very device away. It is worldwide, so whether you live out here in Asia, in Europe, or if you're in North America, you could be one of the only people with this device. Just let me know down below in the comments what your favorite feature is, follow me over on social, and of course, sub to the channel. It's that easy. So on the back, it's got a beast of a camera setup. First off, you have Sony's popular 48 megapixel sensor. This thing takes beautiful stills. Using it out here in Tokyo, you really see how gorgeous the dynamic range is, how much the colors pop, and I don't think there's a better place to test it than here. To the thing that's being marketed the most, this guy has a 10 times hybrid, so very similar to the Huawei P30 Pro. You can go all the way from an ultra wide sensor to 10 times hybrid. You have little increments in between, you know, six, two times, and if you want, you can get a digital zoom all the way up to 60. I wouldn't always recommend going all the way to that full 60, very hard to stabilize. Images aren't as sharp, but if you wanna be that kind of paparazzi person. For example, I was out at Mount Fuji getting super close. Even though you're still far away, having that versatility is always great. It's got pro mode, so perfect for changing up the settings when you want to dial in your shot. Of course, portrait mode, and maybe the best part, time lapse and even its own night sight 2.0 mode. Of course, taking those photos, it's kind of a hit or miss sometimes. Just like most nightscape features on most phones, you really have to pick your shots and I find that it really works when there's no light in the actual photo. For video, you can get all the way up to 4K60. Here's a quick montage that I made out here in Tokyo. The one thing that I wish we saw, if you could only get video functions in the ultra wide setting, that's usually one of my favorites for more interesting shots. But nevertheless, let me know what you guys think of the camera features and functionality. To the feature that you probably have noticed in some of my Insta stories and on social, it's got a front facing camera that actually pops up. It's very different than all other front facing cams that I've seen in the past. Most you actually see the camera just kind of scoot up. This one almost has a little wedge shape. Very interesting, very dynamic, and it means that there is no little bezel at the front of the phone or no small cutout. It's rated for 200,000 actuations without failing. It should be good for around five to six years. And just like the OnePlus 7 Pro, it does have a fall sensor. So just in case you do drop this guy, the camera will close and keep the phone nice and safe. We've got Gorilla Glass 6 on the front and 5 on the back. And let me just tell you, this colorway, one of the most unique and one of my favorites that I've seen, really catches the light nicely. And that's actually a perfect segue into the design. The camera is nice and flush, and that means when you do place it down, you have no wobble. It's very clean and minimal. You unfortunately don't have a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, but you do have micro SD card support to increase the memory. When you flip the phone around, I think this is where the biggest sacrifice is. It does have a beautiful 6.4 inch display. It's flat, unlike say the OnePlus 7 Pro, the Huawei P30 Pro that both have slight curves in the glass. This is flat. I think that's a better design choice, but unfortunately it's only a 1080p panel. Not as vibrant as other ones that we've seen, and I think it's the only thing holding this phone back. And packed inside, Oppo isn't sacrificing any of the internals or hardware. You've got eight gigs of RAM, the latest silicone Adreno 640 GPU. We actually have Color OS, and it's one of my favorite Android skins. Super minimal, very close to stock, and it actually somewhat reminds me of iOS. It's smooth and fluid. I've been using this guy as my daily driver the entire week. And you can only imagine being in Tokyo, a fairly new city. I'm on this guy all the time, checking out where to go, what Insta spots to shoot. I'm on this thing a lot and it has a 4655 milliamp hour battery. 
easily has lasted me the entire day. And like I said, on the device a lot, using it, whether I am having some downtime, playing a couple games, checking Google Maps, of course, updating you guys over on Insta and through social, it has survived and it's been a great device to use. And overall, I think it's been a really solid device. And for those of you that are kind of looking at Oppo for the first time, think of a OnePlus 7 Pro with a better camera. Of course, the screen could be better. I'm hoping the next version does become Quad HD. Depending on which market you're in, I think this could be a very solid option. Or if you're from, say, the US or in Canada, you're visiting somewhere like here, you want to have a unique device, this could be it. Design-wise, beautiful, truly bezel-less, and of course, has that sweet front-facing pop-up cam. I think it's super unique, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys enjoyed all of the awesome B-roll that we got to shoot out here, and I will catch the rest of you in one of my next episodes or vlogs. You can win this guy. Let me know in the comment what your favorite feature is. Catch you in the next one. Peace.